Welcome to Strange Historical Tales. Today we delve into one of the most bizarre and unresolved mysteries in television history, the Max Headroom Broadcast Signal Intrusion. Imagine watching the nightly news or your favorite TV show when suddenly the airwaves are hijacked by a mysterious masked figure. That's exactly what happened to the residents of Chicago in 1987, as two local television stations' broadcast signals were hacked and a pirated broadcast of a still-unidentified hacker wearing a Max Headroom mask appeared. Before we delve deeper into the details of this unprecedented broadcast hijack, let's first understand the icon at the heart of this anomaly. Who or what is Max Headroom? Bryce, would you please introduce us to Max Headroom? What kind of sh sh show is this, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> this is not a show, Max. This is the executive board of Network 23. Ah, 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 exec, exec, exec. You mean, you're the people who execute audiences. This character wasn't just any television personality, but a symbol of the digital age that was rapidly reshaping the world in the 1980s. Max Hedrum is a fictional artificial intelligence character known for his wit and stuttering, electronically altered voice. Created in the mid-1980s, Max was designed to be a satirical representation of a TV presenter. He first appeared in the British-made music video program The Max Hedrum Show, before starring in a science fiction series, Max Hedrum, 20 Minutes into the Future. Max's distinctive angular appearance and glitchy digital persona made him an iconic symbol of the modern digital age, particularly reflecting media-driven and cyberpunk themes. The first incident occurred on the evening of November 22, 1987, during the 9 p.m. news on Chicago's WGN-TV. Viewers were startled as their regular broadcast was suddenly overtaken by a person wearing a Max Headroom mask. The intruder signal, lasting only 17 seconds, was filled with distorted audio and the figure bobbing back and forth in front of a rotating corrugated metal panel, mimicking Max Headroom's iconic geometric background. Ultimately, a quick-thinking engineer at the TV station changed the broadcast frequency, thus terminating the first of the two pirate signals. After the startling interruption of the first broadcast, the scene cut back to a confused news anchor, Dan Roan of WGN-TV, who was caught off guard. With a chuckle, he remarked, well, if you're wondering what that was, so am I. This moment of live television bewilderment set the stage for what was to come later that night. The mysterious figure wasn't finished yet, and the city of Chicago was about to witness an even more bizarre encore on a different channel. The second event of the Max Headroom broadcast intrusion occurred later that same night, shortly after 11 p.m., during a broadcast of Doctor Who on WTTW, a PBS member station in Chicago. This time, the hijacker had a longer segment of about 90 seconds, allowing for a more detailed and bizarre presentation. Hacker made various nonsensical comments, including references to WGN commentator Chuck Swirsky, who he mockingly called a freaking liberal. The audio was distorted, but the speech was more intelligible than the first incident. 
The intruder also held up a can of Pepsi, saying, Catch the wave, while wearing a glove, parodying Coke's then-current ad campaign featuring Max Headroom. The segment ended with the intruder being spanked with a fly swatter by an off-camera accomplice as he bent over, exposing his butt. This extended airtime allowed the individual to perform more elaborate actions and speak longer, making the second interruption more infamous. Despite the clearer video and audio, the perpetrators were never identified, and the incident remains a notable example of early broadcast signal hijacking. The incidents triggered an immediate investigation by the FCC and FBI. Hijacking the broadcast signal required advanced knowledge of broadcast systems, suggesting an insider with technical expertise might be responsible. Others believed it was an elaborate prank by local tech enthusiasts, yet no substantial evidence has ever confirmed these speculations. In the end, no suspects were definitively identified, and no one has ever been charged. The incident highlighted the vulnerabilities in broadcast signal security, leading to increased efforts to safeguard against unauthorized intrusions. Enhancements included upgraded encryption methods for transmitting signals and reinforcing the physical security of broadcast facilities. Broadcasters also implemented more stringent monitoring systems to detect and prevent unauthorized access. These measures have significantly improved the security of broadcasting, making such intrusions less likely and easier to trace if they occur. The relative success of the signal intrusion not only prompted updated broadcast security measures, but it also inspired other hackers to engage in similar events, such as the Playboy Channel religious message hack, also conducted later in 1987, in which the Playboy Channel was overridden with messages of religious faith. As we wrap up this episode of Strange Historical Tales, the Max Hedrum broadcast intrusion remains one of the most audacious hacks in television history, highlighting the ingenuity of the hacker or hackers involved. This incident not only left a lasting impact on how broadcast signals are secured, but also serves as a reminder of the ever-present balance between technology and security. If you enjoyed unraveling this digital mystery with us, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share your thoughts and theories below. Could this bizarre incident happen again today? Until next time, keep exploring the mysteries of history.